accuracy and precision tests are quite unique in their nature. Well, first of all, they are in your second language. So it's English, French, or German. Uh, the accuracy and precision test is, is unique also because you have 40 questions in six minutes. So keep that in mind. These are six very, uh, very short six minutes of your life because you need to concentrate uh, incredibly to make sure that you spot the errors in a chart. So in this case, you have certain icons and you have certain uh, pictograms that you need to identify where the error is. So in this case, uh, the answer would be that uh, you need to look at line number two with Finland, because that's what the chart refers to. And you look at the percentage uh, of recycled uh, materials, and then you can spot uh, the different icons and which one is missing and which one uh, should be on the screen, but it is not. Now, the trick here is that do not be frustrated if you cannot finish the 40 questions, because these, uh, this is not made that you, you are able to finish it in six minutes, but they will test and see you how far can you get and with what precision can you operate to make sure that you answer the highest possible number of questions. Further on, uh, when it comes to the methodology of the accuracy and precision test, it's an error finding exercise. You look at numerical data or textual data, and you always have pictograms on. The Further on, you will uh, have, as if you're doing the audit, economics, or finance uh, accounting profile, you'll be have you'll have an organizing and prioritizing test. The organizing prioritizing test also in your second language, is going to uh, look like, similar to this one, you have a chart or a table which is similar to a numerical reasoning table, but the exercise itself is far easier and it doesn't require any mathematical, any, any numerical operations. So in this question, it says chauffeured car, higher prices, and the task is that you need to arrange transport for nine colleagues to the airport using the car service provider whose prices are listed in the table. So how much will it this cost uh, if price is, price is of utmost importance? So these type of questions you will have 24 and in 30 minutes, but based on feedback from candidates and from previous years, there is really, the time is not a challenge here. And this is considered to be one of the easier exercises because most candidates are afraid of the abstract reasoning or the numerical reasoning or the verbal, but not so much the organizing, prioritizing, or the accuracy one. So in this case, you would need to look at how many passengers are, but not to forget that each car uh, needs a driver, at least for now, before Google develops its driverless cars. And for the sake of the exercise, you need to count with 11. So in this case, for the organizing and prioritizing tests, it's real world problems. Uh, product comparison could be the, one of the types that you are confronted with, numbers and texts, timetables, uh, and as I said, it's similar to numerical reasoning, but it's far less complex. So moving further, there is also a situational judgment test, which didn't used to be the case, but uh, EPSO has, has introduced this recently, also for the ASD profiles. So the situational judgment test, again, in English, French, or German, is when there is a short description of a situation and you need to choose the so-called most effective and least effective path or course of action. So in this case, you would look at which of the answers would, would qualify as the best uh, thing to do in this situation and the worst thing to do. And uh, this is a little bit of a subjective test. There is no doubt about it, but there's a lot of scientific methodology behind. And when, when Gabor, uh, our CEO, he does methodology webinars, he, he discusses this in detail of how you can actually look a little bit behind the curtains, behind the scene, and find the best possible answer for the judgment tests. So here you see the highlighting of uh, the two types of answers that you need to provide. 
So further on, uh, let me mention here the so-called talent screener. Talent screener is only used for the scientists in the current uh, setup. Uh, the audit, economics, and finance profiles do not have a talent screener. For the scientific profiles, there is a talent screener which is similar a little bit to a CV screening, but it's based on answers that you provide for very specific questions. So EPSO will provide a certain scoring based on your answers, which reflect to your experience uh, and your background. And this sort of constitutes a pre-selection. So those in the scientific profile do not need to sit the previously mentioned tests as part of the pre-selection, but it's the talent screener. But later, they will need to do that. Those who are shortlisted will need to do an abstract reasoning, verbal reasoning, and numerical reasoning as part of the assessment center. So having mentioned uh, that, oh, sorry, here is just a, a summary slide on the, the pre-selection test that we have covered so far. Just two more words on the scoring is that each, each exam has its own specific scoring. There is an objective pass mark that you need to reach in each exam, in each uh, one that we have mentioned, but only the best X number of candidates will actually proceed to the second stage, to the assessment center. So there is, this is why it's called a competition, because you don't, you not only need to pass with a certain score, but you need to be among the top candidates. And this is the summary of the scoring uh, that I've mentioned earlier. An interesting and important thing to point out is that the accuracy and precision, and the organizing prioritizing, they, the pass mark is counted jointly. So if you are not very good in the accuracy and precision, but excellent in the organizing, prioritizing, you may be able to pass, though ideally uh, you should score uh, at least above the medium in terms of above uh, half of the scores, a good chance of proceeding further. And the same story with abstract numerical reasoning is that their pass mark is combined. So if you only get, say, two or three points in the abstract reasoning, but you get 10 points in the numerical, you reach the pass mark. Interestingly, the situational judgment test, they have a 60% pass mark. So 24 points out of 40 need to be reached. So I mentioned the assessment center, which is the, the second and the decisive stage of the uh, selection competitions. And the top line you see is uh, these are the exercises you have for all AST3 exams. So there is a so-called structured interview, an in-tray exercise, which is like an inbox exercise. There is a case study that you need to write. And there is a so-called group exercise. And these test your specific and general competencies in the field. And as I mentioned earlier, the, one, the line you see uh, in red, or the boxes in the second row, that is relevant for the scientific profiles, scientific and the technicians, we, where you have as part of the assessment center for those who were pre-selected based on the talent screener, abstract numerical reasoning tests, there is a second interview related to the uh, job profile, and uh, there is a specific test, which is again related to that, plus a group exercise, plus a structured interview. So that is the assessment center. There is a lot to be said about the assessment center. I myself do regular full day trainings for the assessment center where we do simulations. So it's a, it's a very, it's a fascinating topic and fascinating uh, thing to, to, uh, to do because it's highly practical, improves a lot of your skills. Uh, so when you get there, uh, make sure to check also our website. We publish tons of free information and be releasing lots of uh, instructional videos about the assessment center and how to master uh, your performance. And at the very end of it, or almost at the very end, you have a reserve list, which means that you are eligible to be recruited by any of the institutions. So there's a certain number of places on the reserve list. And essentially, these are the numbers I had discussed earlier. 
in the uh, at the beginning of this presentation the, the reserve has a validity time usually it's one year but for the scientific uh, AST3 it's going to be longer uh, for the AST3 it's probably going to be one year okay? so you need to be recruited within the period of validity of the reserve list and the final stage is when you get an invitation for a specific job interview which will be relevant to the to the position that you want to fill based on your uh, pre-existing exams and the fact that you are on the reserve list so this uh, these are the five crucial elements the five main steps of the selection competition so the question is how to get the job and to make it much more much more uh, down to earth how to pass this competition and i hope i don't disappoint anyone by saying there is no magic bullet this is like winning an olympic gold this is this requires a lot of preparation you need to practice and based on our research and feedback from candidates for at least four to eight weeks before the exam now obviously we've heard stories of candidates passing the exam with with zero preparation or one day but we've heard candidates uh, preparing for three or four months and not passing so obviously this is very individual but based on what we have had as as i said research and feedback this seems to be uh, sufficient and tailored enough to pass apart from that make sure that your practice is regular so you prepare for one hour every day or five days a week or you set out allocate uh, specific times when you prepare and not just say well i do something here so do something there when i have 15 minutes available consider it as a private class consider it as a task as a project that you need to fulfill and make sure you have a plan also i advise you to learn the methodology you will find tons of tips and tricks on our website uh, ebooks etc so methodology is really something that can help you scientifically approach these test questions persistence is just as important that maybe your initial enthusiasm might decrease or die down as you progress make sure that you keep up with your preparation you do not give a few weeks or days before reaching the exam date so simulation and help and assistance from friends and information sources online so to get you into the mood here is a snapshot a screenshot of a verbal reasoning it's from our site uh, to give you an idea how verbal reasoning looks like and as mentioned earlier a passage of text with four answer options uh, you need to pick the one which is what we call patently true so it's not just partly true uh, it's not somewhat true but it's 100% uh, relevant to the text and based on the text you answer same story with numerical reasoning you even see a calculator here to find the correct answer based on in this case the the uh, highest piracy rate then uh, for abstract reasoning this is uh, one of the harder ones uh, complex ones you even see an explanation that we we provide so you can learn from it uh, abstract reasoning at least for me personally is the most challenging but again depends on your mindset depends on uh, which background you have you may find uh, other uh, exercises easier or harder here another example this one this time just for uh, the variety we put this in french so you have accuracy test and you have and prioritizing tests to practice. We also have lots of free packages. So make sure that you familiarize yourself with these exams so you can practice uh, as, uh, as well as you possibly can for the exam. So uh, we offer you training packages. We offer you methodology uh, uh, of every kind. Uh, Gabor, as I said, our CEO, he's an expert on that. He has trained almost 4,000 people online. If you can imagine what experience he has gained with that. Uh, for It's a two-hour intensive online training. It's interactive. Uh, also, the same thing with the professional skills and the situational judgment.
And as I said, make sure to check the free ebooks and tips and tricks. I personally, uh, I, I feel very committed to sharing as much free information with candidates as possible. So you are well informed in terms of what to expect, how to prepare, and how to make the most out of the exams. And here, if you forgive me for recommending my book, this is the, the new design. You are the very first ones to see the new design of the Ultimate EU test book, uh, the 2013 edition. It's coming out in three weeks, hopefully. Well, almost certainly. We've worked a lot with updating it. And in the administrator edition, we have replaced all questions. It's brand new questions that no one's ever seen before. So if you prefer a print material or add a print material to your preparation set, then uh, may I recommend you uh, this little work. Here you can find what I promised earlier, the special discount offer, which is exclusive to those who hear this and see this tonight. Uh, you can use it for the test packages. You can use it for live webinars, uh, whichever uh, product or service you'd like to. One important thing is that it's 21% discount, which we hardly ever give such a discount, but we made an exception, uh, as I said, because of the end of the world coming tomorrow and we're crossing our fingers, it will not happen. So there's a 24 hour validity, which uh, is valid from right now. And uh, feel free actually to share it, even though it's exclusive, but we do would like to spread it uh, for a wider audience and so make sure that you can you tell your friends and those who are preparing for these exams so they can benefit from this uh, very special Christmas uh, New Year offer. So uh, all in all, as mentioned earlier, you will get the full recording. We'll make sure that uh, it's, a, it's a continuous, uh, nicely edited version with uh, that uh, technical issue will not disturb your viewing pleasure. And there is a Q&A memo uh, that Martin will tell me uh, what happened on the chat uh, wall. And if you have any questions right now or later, we always answer you within 24 hours. We provide you uh, free advice as much as we can uh, on any of these exams so you can really have an optimal preparation uh, experience. So I thank you very much for your participation. And it's just a link to the tips and tricks uh, section of our uh, site, which, as I said, it's completely free. We have more than 50 articles published there. And as I said, if you have any questions about the substance, the application procedure, eligibility, we will help you as much as possible. And uh, a small disclaimer, just to make sure that whatever I said is based on our very best knowledge and understanding and interpretation of official materials, but we are not the uh, personal selection office and we uh, have our disclaimer that that's the authentic information what you see in the notice of competition and that you get from official channels. So I think uh, it's right now seven o'clock in Brussels. So I hope to have respected your time and uh, didn't interrupt your uh, Christmas and holiday preparations. So let me take the opportunity to wish everyone uh, very happy holidays and good recharge and relaxation. Happy New Year. And please feel free to contact us if you have any question related to EU careers and uh, competitions organized by EPSO. Thanks very much for your attention and have a pleasant evening.